everybody. Dream killers and how the narcissistic parents, or how narcissists, narcissists just in general, can be dream killers. So between the ages of 18 and 24, I was down in Southern California. And never once did it occur to me to pursue anything in the entertainment business. Never once. I was just, it was just, it had occurred to me all the time when I was a little kid, all the time when I was younger. Um, but by the time I was actually down there living, it never was suggested to me, you know, that, you know, to, that it would just, it seemed like it wasn't a possibility. And I keep thinking, you know, looking back on myself then, trying to look at, you know, objectively at myself then, I was, you know, 18 to 24, perfect shape, a dancer. What would they be looking for, you know? If they were looking for anybody, who would they be looking for? But it never occurred to me. Actually, it, lo and behold, one day, um, I am approached by these two men. I, I noticed I'm on lunch break for my, my art gallery job. I noticed these two men, they're kind of, have their, their heads really into something that they're working on. And they keep looking at me and looking down and looking at me and talking. With and finally, they come over and talk to me. It turns out to be a writer and a casting director. And they had been doing auditions and they weren't finding the person they were looking for. And then they saw me and I was apparently exactly what they had in mind or something like that. And, and he really wanted me to come in and do a screen test and all this stuff. Well, I told only one person. I didn't tell anybody back home. I didn't. I told my boyfriend at the time, um, who he and I were already splitting up. And, um, and I think that I told him because, you know, I was, my big thing was that I was, what motivated me was love. And so I think that I would have stayed and pursued it if he, if I would have had the, the idea that someone in LA loved me. But my friends were leaving and he didn't really, he didn't really give me the, you know, the, the impression that I should stay and pursue it and he was really into it and all that. So um, I went ahead and left and I forgot all about it. I forgot all about this thing. And what I finally remember it because I am reading an article not that, you know, like years later, 20 years later, I'm reading an article about Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron, who around the same time, she was in South Africa where she lived. She had her own experiences with, with trauma and abuse, for sure. She had seen her, and I understand her mother actually had to shoot and kill her father um, to protect her because he had grown abusive. Um, alcoholic and abusive and one day was heading to attack her and he so she actually saw her mother kill her father right in front of her to protect her um, and didn't there was no jail or anything because it was definitely definitely in self-defense and um, but you know so she definitely had her share, fair share of abuse experience she at 18 years old said to her mom that she wanted to go out to LA knowing no one and just see if she could make something happen and her mom said okay sure I think that's a great idea. Here is $500, a round trip aer airplane ticket. You have two weeks. See what you can make happen. And she sent her off to, off to, the Calif or, off to California. She knew no one, from what I understand, she knew no one. She had a very thick uh, South African accent. Um, and she just started pounding on doors, getting rejection after rejection, so, talking about her accent being too strong and this and that and the other thing, and, um, and getting discouraged. and. Finally, her, her, her mom gave her a $500 check from South Africa. Finally, you know, after a couple of exhausting days, she's out of money and tired and, and everything, and she goes to the bank to cash her check, and and the bank teller gives her some trouble about cashing it. It's a South African check, for goodness sakes, and so she won't, you know, she won't cash it. And so Shirley's just exhausted and whatever, just kind of loses it and just goes off verbally on, on this woman, this, uh, this, this bank teller. Well, lo and behold, standing in the line behind her was a casting director. And for whatever reason, he thought he saw something in her. And he signed her that day. And the rest is history, and she became an Oscar-winning actress. And so when she calls her mom, mom, it happened. You know, her, her mom was, like, packing her bag. She was already ready. Like, her mom, like, they completely thought this was a plausible thing to do, to head out for two weeks with... $500 South African check with your South African accent knowing nobody that that it's it's quite possible that you could end up becoming a you know Oscar winning actress I mean and it's crazy whereas my family 
you know, I'm living down there for six years and it's like an impossibility that anything like that could ever even, would ever even happen. And it's just kind of unreal to me. So if I had pursued anything, for, I mean, this dropped in my lap. If I had pursued anything, I can only imagine, you know, what happened was supposed to happen. But it really, it really has informed me when it's come to my kids and, and the way that I have really gotten behind their dreams. Um, one of them, you know, was just a, a brilliant musician and singer and songwriter. And, and the other one uh, really into athlete, you know, athlete sports, like um, extreme sports, skateboarding, BMX riding, skiing, trick skiing, that kind of thing. And I have been an absolute, absolutely behind their, their pursuits of those things. And um, not ever once trying to give any kind of impression that it was pie in the sky or that it couldn't happen or because lots of people would want to do it. It was an impossibility. You know, I just, I really believed that, that, that why, you know, why not them? Like, you know, they, you know, why not pursue your dreams? And it, and it really occurred to me because I saw how their dad was very much like my parents. And it may not be that he, um, uh, you know, I don't know because I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't always there in front of him to hear, hear what he would say. But just knowing him as I did and, and hearing the things that they would tell me, um, it was sort of that whole thing of you know being practical and treating your your real dreams like they were, should be a hobby, which is basically how my parents talked to me about the, the, you know that's not really a po a real plausible thing you could really do, uh, you know, do something practical, and then you know do this on the side and pursue it on the side. My parents hated their jobs, but like I don't think they could really picture anyone being really happy, and I definitely felt felt like my. I feel like there is an undertow of like really not wanting, um, not wanting success for someone else. So off with his dad, he would come back with sort of the the wind out of his sails about his dream, and I would have to come, you know, kind of pump him back up about it. I think that there's something about narcissists being dream killers, and um, for if you're around a narcissist, make sure that they are not sucking the energy out of your dreams because I think that it can happen in a sort of a covert way before you even know it's happened and just sort of undermine your confidence and when you're going out there to pursue something that takes a lot of guts to pursue you can't afford to have that happen you need to have people that are behind you you need to you know you can't afford to let people you know undermine your confidence so don't let it happen all right thanks a lot talk to you later bye bye